Welcome to the second part of the Stonebreaker. I've been prompted to further uh, speak on this topic because, number one, uh, it is such a revelation, at least to me, on this subject. And number two, I believe this could really help clarify some of the confusion in modern day Christianity. This really appears to be something that's left out. We're often taught by mainstream Christianity that you just need to follow Jesus and just put your faith in Jesus. And I think this could be great. I'm not discounting the power of just, you know, putting your faith in Jesus because, I mean, that is the way, ultimately. But some people may have questions why is this man Jesus so powerful? Why is it that we need to uh, follow Jesus? And for those who are unbelievers, they may do that out of obedience, but they may still have questions. Why Jesus Christ? Why is, what is the reason behind this? And then people often point to his death on the cross, that this is the reason. Well, another logical uh, retort from that may be, well, there are many who have died for others over the years. So why, why Jesus? Uh, there are many who go off to war and die for their country. Um, but why Jesus? What is it behind the dying of Jesus and the sacrifice of D Jesus that makes him so powerful? Well, this is what I want to explain in this uh, short video here, or at least I plan on it being short. Um, we need to look at the revelation that was in Stonebreaker number one. This is a revelation that came to me as I pieced certain parts of the scripture together. And we're going to go through and just review real quick. So uh, Ezekiel thirty six twenty six, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. So all throughout, uh, we're being warned about the hardening of the heart. Even Jesus warns us about a, a hardening of the heart. Um, this is a thing that's being mentioned over and over and over. So. Jesus came, uh, according to Micah 2.13, the breaker, who is the Messiah, who opens the way, shall go up before them, liberating them. They will break out, pass through the gate, and go out. So let's meditate on these actual words here. Jesus said to him, I am the way. So where can we make this connection? I am the way. And it says, the breaker who opens the way. The way, the way to who? The way to God. No one comes to the Father except through me. So he's talking about the way to God. Uh, now, if the heart is covered by a stone or it's been hardened, how can one connect to the Lord? So that right there, just these three verses together, show us why why he is the way uh, many people i think are just blind to um this and i know you know I, I had read this verse i am the way the truth but why is he the way okay so so we've covered that now uh jesus also says I am the resurrection and the life. So this is this is really something that I think is there's a there's a big lack of clarification. Jesus did not overcome death on the cross. He overcame it with the resurrection. He died on the cross and that was the beginning of the the or of the breaking of the curse. There was that ripping of the temple curtain, right? The veil. So 
now it's become clear. He's, he's broken that old covenant. He has relieved us of the curse. So this was, so the death was important, but what overcame the ultimate death, what overcame the demons, what overcame sin was in fact the resurrection. Jesus has ultimate authority over demons because of the resurrection. The resurrection itself actually proves that he has ultimate authority over demons because they operate out of fear of death, many of them. They operate out of their power of death. However, Jesus, because of the resurrection, now has proven that he has authority over death. Not even death could overcome Jesus. So, because of this power of Jesus over death and of sin, because sin's ultimate direction is bringing one to death. So, demons, their strategy is to get one to sin to bring them to death before they can receive Jesus. That's what they want to do. They want to bring people to death before Jesus can come into their heart and free them. That way they can capture souls into hell. So this is why this is so important, y'all. Um, he has this authority over death, which if a demon puts stone within a person's heart where they cannot receive the light of God, they can't listen to God, they're hardened from grace, they're hardened from faith, then what happens is they need an answer to this. They need a way to break out of this hardening of heart. The one who's been anointed by God to break them out of this hardening of heart, which I'm calling the stone breaker here because the, I'm using I'm piecing together these elements to call it this name. He is the one anointed with the power who has the power over death, the power over sin to break that stone. Why? Because of the resurrection. Whoever believes in me, though he die, shall he live. Yet shall he live. So, because he has the power to break the stone that's covering a person to the light of God, to God's wisdom, to God's life, this is why Jesus, one of the many reasons Jesus is so, so integral in one's salvation. He is the one anointed with the power over demons. If you have a demon that's covering your heart or has put sin in you or has tempted you into sin, and now you have a hardening of heart, hardening of conscience, Jesus can break a person from that. He says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They come in and go out and find pasture. This is John 10, 9. Well, where else do we see the gate? Well, we see it. They will break out, pass through the gate, and go out. This is why it's so important. We, we're looking at these same words here, guys, ladies. Okay. So let's look at another one. Uh, when the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked him, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Y'all, this emphasizes 
that Jesus is here as and and not only this function but this is a major function of Jesus it's one of his major functions is breaking that stone he's there for the sinners he's there to free us free our hearts from the devil from hardening our hearts from stopping up our ears from uh, blocking us to the true way of God which is salvation through grace which comes to us from faith that's in the heart y'all if you haven't watched the first video uh, make sure to watch that video because some of this may be explained better through there but these three verses and really it's four if you look at the new heart the breaker uh, the way and the truth and I am the gate and then I'm adding on here the resurrection and the life. He is the life that cannot be defeated by the devil. He is that ultimate authority over hell. He overcame death. And so when demons see him, they know they have no power over him. When you put your faith in Jesus, you are essentially saying you are part of the body of Jesus and the devil no longer has power over you. This is why it's so important. He has broken away the stone that was blocking us from the light. And now we're part of him. It's so beautiful, y'all. So, y'all, that's it. I wanted to make this one short. Uh, let me know your thoughts below on this. And God bless you wherever you are. Hope you're having a fantastic time. Thank you for joining me.